Reed Rowlands. Um, it is gratifying to see that the Welsh Government now has a clear idea of its role in supporting the business community in Wales, especially with regard to investment. It appears we now have a framework within which the Government can achieve its objectives. This is an essential part of delivering that much-needed boost to prosperity so desperately needed by the people of Wales, especially those in the lower-end skills sector. Uh, the new economic contract is also to be welcomed. We particularly like the Cabinet Secretary's objective is to ensure that with all contracts, each party gets something for something and that it, it is to include an ongoing dialogue with business. We all acknowledge the considerable challenge Wales face uh, with a relatively small amount of uh, money companies are investing in R&D. So it was good to see that this point is dealt with in the financial contract that would ensure companies improve productivity, upskill workforces and invest in R&D. Uh, turning to government investment in the business sector, I have long called on the government to simplify pathways to investment uh, for businesses and it is to be noted that these were one of the key issues raised in your consultations with the business sector. I have some concern that you feel the best way to deal with these issues, it, uh, but it has to be said in cons consort with the consolidation of some funds under the Economic Futures Fund, you advocate yet another advisory board. Uh, is this uh, introducing yet another tier of bureaucracy? Uh, there is no doubt that calls to action should very much concentrate financial assistance to those businesses involved in developing the goals uh, which the government has outlined in other statements on economic policy. But there are many business types that, out there which may not, because of their very nature of the business, be able to comply with the criteria set out under the calls for action. Are those to be excluded from investment entirely as a result of the implementation of this action plan. We do note considerable engagement uh, the Welsh Government have had with industry in developing this new economic strategy and welcome this constructive process, especially as the business sector seems to be fully engaged. It is to be hoped that this consultation process will continue in order to help facilitate the goals set out by the Welsh Government. Uh, whilst, as has been indicated, we welcome much of these proposals, I must agree with both my fellow AMs, Russell uh, George and Adam Price. Uh, we note that, uh, however, there are no well-defined targets other than the stated goal of seeing productivity and GVA per head narrowed to 90% of the UK average by 2030. We urge the Government to give more clarification regarding timelines and targets so that the Chamber can scrutinise the delivery of uh, those targets. After all, measurability is a crucial part in triggering corrective actions in order to bring plans back on track. Can I thank the Member for his contribution and for generously welcoming the statement today? Um, and I'm very pleased in particular by his recognition of the, uh, the public investment with a social purpose um, ethos that's right at the heart of the economic action plan. Investment clarity and simplicity was something that many, many business stakeholder groups called for. I'm pleased that we've responded with the establishment of the Economy Futures Fund and that Business Wales will be working more closely with Careers Wales that we will have a far clearer, a far simpler method of drawing down not just financial support but also advice from businesses. Um, I should assure members that the Ministerial Advisory Board will not have a role in determining funding applications. There will be no additional bureaucracy um, associated with the establishment of the Ministerial Advisory Board in regard to any um, applications that come forward from businesses for the Economy Futures Fund or any other fund for that matter. The Ministerial Advisory Board is there to provide challenge and there to provide advice to us as we implement further other parts of the plan and as we test its impact. And one of the early pieces of work that the Ministerial Advisory Board will be undertaking will be a review of the impact of the economic contract.
um, it's absolutely vital that we're able to demonstrate the contract is indeed leading to improvements in terms of quality of work um, and working practices, that it is leading to an accelerated pace of decarbonisation within the workplace, that it's contributing to growth, even di either directly to the business concerned or within the supply chain. Um, and we have fully engaged with the business community, the member is right, during the process of designing the plan and designing the impl implementation of it. And I can assure members that any business failing to comply with the economic contract, while they may not be able to um, apply for direct financial support in that instance, what they will be given is support and advice in order to improve their working ways so that they can come back round to the door and reapply. Thank you. Jay Rathbone. 